So the TR-808 bass drum circuit is pretty simple in its uh, design. You've got a, an attack decay envelope which controls the output of a, a resonating low pass filter which is all then fed through a, an op amp or a, a JFET amplifier out to your speakers. These are This is then triggered or synced with a, uh, a gate input. To make this work you'd, you'd press the key cap or, or the, or the, the um, send the signal from your sequencer into the 808 it would arrive here at this trigger input uh, it would go through a little bit of um, conditioning basically it gets split up here and then you have a section which comes across into the um, envelope to uh, trigger that to go through its cycle it's what's well, considered an audio signal which then goes through the amplifier and made made bigger and sent out to your speakers so if we have a look in reactor we can kind of see how this works so we start off with a gate this happens to be a trigger which is a momentary gate signal this comes into our clock oscillator which is a, a neat way of making sure that every time it a gate is generated that the filter uh, knows what to do and where it is and to keeps it in time and make sure that you don't end up triggering the envelope halfway through. Uh, it just it just make it just keeps things neat, neat and tidy basically. So we've got a gate comes into our clock, sets our filter into resonation, or make sure that it's still resonating. The unclocked trigger comes straight into the envelope the reason we do this is because this is an oscillator so it is sending out a pulse you know um, over a time period so you know you only want to hear the kick drum when you play the note so that's what this comes in sends the envelope through its cycle and then you have a level control before it hits the main output so if we have a look at the panel bit of design that I've done here we can start to hear what all this sounds like. So if I bring up the, um, let's get this organized a little bit better. If I bring up both views here, you can I can point at what's going on as I do things. Uh, where's the output gone? There it is. So I'm just triggering these off a keyboard just on my desk. Obviously you can't see that. Um, so we have a, a volume control. This here is this volume here. It should light up as you can see as I click on different things. This is our tune, which is actually our filter cutoff. We have a tone, which is actually our attack. And we have a decay, which is fine. So if we bring by the way, I'm getting the values for these off of the um, service manual, which I'll link in the description, uh, so that it's somewhat uh, close to what an actual 808, or, or at least the 808 that they used in the service manual, would be uh, tuned to. So the lowest this decay goes to is uh, 60 milliseconds. So if we bring the tone down, we get that click. We can bring in that decay all the way up to 800 milliseconds, which is almost a second. We can tune this so at the moment it's set to, if we have a look at the value here, so at the moment it's set to 54. which is close to the, if I actually make this what the manual recommends, which is 56. So this is what the service manual specifies as tuned uh, by, and bearing in mind, they didn't have a potentiometer on their original machines. They just had a resistor. So this is the uh, quote unquote factory spec. 
300 milliseconds, which is the mid range that they gave, and uh, a, a attack of the shortest it can be. But we can have a bit of fun with this because we're working outside the confines of an actual circuit. We can play with the tuning a little bit and get, you know, down. Two octaves, I think, actually. Now, 32 hertz is incredibly low, and you know, if you're listening to this on a, a, a laptop or a um, speakerphone or something, you, you probably won't hear that. But if you are listening on on decent monitors, you can start to hear why samples of the 808 kick were being used as as bass uh, instruments, especially through the 90s in in jungle and and drum and bass and other uh, genres. Because you can get these incredible low um, kind of room rattling tones out of it. Yeah, and obviously if you pitch that up and down over a keyboard instead of just having a single tone, um, you, you can get incredibly deep uh, bass lines. And, you know, later on they started to distort them and it, that kind of goes off into its own, it almost becomes a different instrument. So I hope this was uh, helpful to explain the bass drum circuit and how um, the 808 approaches uh, sound design and sound generation. There isn't a, an oscillator in this, yet you are getting... Um, almost a sine wave using a filter which is you know it might seem strange to a lot of people but it, but it is a thing that you can do especially if you have a, a resonant filter a lot of Roland equipment does have pretty resonant filters um, Moog have pretty resonant filters that you can do this with and it, it's not a difficult patch to set up outside of um, reactor as well I mean you can do this with with a with any synth that that you can um, get the filter to resonate uh, sufficiently with and as long as you've got a keyboard attached to that uh, or some way of triggering the note um, you can set the envelope up to do exactly what this was kind of hardwired to do um, yeah so I hope this has been informative and I'll be working out how the snare drum works next and uh, maybe by Christmas we'll have a fully synthesized 808 within Reactor. Yeah.